Welcome to Vino Live. We are on our fifth episode, and I joined you for episode one when we kicked it off. And we've been going for the last five weeks, since this is episode five, with Chef Kevin D, or Chef Kev D, uh, from the Food Network. So we want to just make a couple of quick announcements. Um, we are off next week because it's a holiday week. We want everyone to go out, enjoy the summer, enjoy the fireworks, be safe. Make sure you order some wine from the Innovations at the same time. And then following, we're going to have a special guest coming and joining us for Thursday, July 9th. Um, well, that will be our season finale. And then we're also talking about going on the road. And for our, a lot of the um, corporate customers and other social um, private people that have been asking us, hey, we love the chef, we love Kev D. Um, how can we book an event with him? Just come on to Vinovations.us. All the information about private bookings with uh, Chef Kev D will be online. And without any further ado, I actually want to bring on our buddy Chef Kev D. Me? Yes, that is Kev D. Yep. Jason <laughs> Lee, everybody. All the way, we started this thing episode one. Episode, episode one, we're now on episode five. We're almost through a full season. We're going to make a dish. We've got some fun wines. Um, what do we got today? We're going to make a lobster and corn fritter. Very nice. With a citrus aioli. And we remember the citrus aioli courtesy of Casey, thank yes. you for reminding us. Good thing Casey's here. Yes. Um, so this is a, a semi-famous dish, right? Yeah. And why you, is it famous? You're, you're going to tell me. This dish, this lobster corn fritter, I made in the Great Food Truck Race on Food Network, um, episode six or seven in Yuma, Arizona. Uh, we had a fry later on our truck, which did not work. So I had a pan like this full of oil, there you um, go. a little side burner, and I made 5,000 fritters out of one little pan like this. And we broke the record for all time 5, sales. Thousand fritters. Still stands to this day, 12 seasons, highest sales in one episode of this New England Grill. There so, you go. Um, first step, we're gonna turn our we're gonna take a medium saucepan, fill it halfway with canola oil. And we're gonna turn it out on medium. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to warm up. You guys are all gonna cook this later. Um, so we're gonna ours is already warm, and with while it's continuing to warm up, we're gonna make our batter. Um, okay, so, before you start, yes. what, are, what are we forgetting right now? Uh, well, why? Yes, there we go. So today, because you mentioned that we're going to have uh, the lobster corn fritter, I decided to work with our wine manager and pick out some phenomenal California domestic Chardonnays to go along with your lobster corn fritter. Perfect. And the first one we're going to try is Belvine Chardonnay, and it's actually from Napa, California. Um, I'm sure everyone's heard of Napa. So let me pour you a quick glass. I know that we're not really uh, having this with the corn fritter. I mean, uh, the lobster fritter. So I'm going to pour you a little bit. Okay. And then we'll just go back just to it. Taste. Just a taste. Cheers. There you go. Cheers. You know what? Mmm. That's got some nice fruit. Peach, mango, nice. little apricot. Am I getting apricot? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you're picking up a slight uh, hint of the fruit there. And there's also oak. So this is a traditionally oak chardonnay. Very good. California and Napa is known for their buttery chardonnays. All right, so what do we got? So we're going to start with a couple eggs. All okay. right? Two eggs into a bowl, metal mixing bowl if you have it. If not, anything is fine. We're going to whisk them up. Why metal? Easier to clean. The batter doesn't stick. Like oh. with a porcelain bowl, it sticks a little bit, but the metal slides right off. Or so, a non cooker. See, I don't know these things. A non cooker, basically. Well, good thing you're here to talk about the wine. <laughs> So we have our eggs. I'm going to go with a little bit of flour and a healthy, about a tablespoon of baking powder. Okay, and we're going to mix this up with a spatula. And we're going to make a nice thick batter. We want uh, to be nice and thick, not runny like a pancake batter, but almost like a dough. We're going to add in some beer, so it's going to be dry at first. I'm going to fold all those eggs in that flour. So you're just really kind of lapping it over. Yep. You're not really mixing it around. You're just kind of flapping We're, it over. We little, call that folding in. Folding. And I just added some salt and pepper and a little Old Bay, a New England favorite, right? A little bit of Old Bay. And we're making a nice thick batter. I can do that up here so you can see it a little better. That batter's starting to form. As that forms, we have a little bit of beer here. This is a Hefenweiss. Okay. And it helps with the bubbles and it makes it airy so it's not like a heavy... Uh, beignet, it's more of a, a fritter style, so that's going to also help with moisture. But I noticed uh, you just poured a little bit. Just a little bit. We don't so want it to be too... So is the rest for us to drink? Yes. 
to eat our, with our fritters and to drink with our wine. <laughs> There's never enough, right? Um, a little more flour, and then we're going to fold in. We have this beautiful lobster meat here. Uh, we just want to run a knife over the big boys because you don't want to too big but not too small. So just a rough chop right in our bowl. You can even break it apart with your fingers. And we have How some. How much lobster would you say? That looks like half a pound. That's a quarter pound, pound, and I've used half of that, right? So then we're going to throw in some frozen corn. If you want to get fancy, you can roast this corn ahead of time. 350 degrees, olive oil, salt, pepper, until the edges start to get brown and you get that nice nutty roasted flavor. Okay, so we got the two great major ingredients. We got the lobster, lobster, corn, and we're making our batter. In the meantime, our oil is heating up to about 350. Okay, if you have a meat thermometer or a uh, candy thermometer at home and you want to do that, you can do it. If not, you can try a couple out first ahead of time. And so is that oil ever going to bubble over? No, no, no. It's uh, canola oil, which I use because it, it burns at a very high heat. So if this was olive oil, you'd see smoke coming up and billowing because that's good to yeah. know. So olive uh, olive oil, you don't want to use for frying, um, but you want to use canola or vegetable, even avocado oil has a higher burn point. Okay, so we have a nice batter here. Can you guys see that? Can I see that? No. You can see that at home. Okay. It's a very good consistency. You see that? How it's, it's not thick? Ready. Right. You're right. And the key to this dish, two ounce ice cream scoop. Okay? This is what's going to get your perfectly shaped fritters. If you don't have this, you can use a spoon. Uh, I'll just show you one with a spoon because not everybody has one. Uh, you just want to take it, get about that much on, and then just drop it in the hot oil like that. Good size tablespoon. Yes. Because we hear of innovations are professionals, right? <laughs> We're using an ice cream soup. And you're gonna Because that gives you a perfectly, perfectly brown. brown. And the key, you want to make sure you get lobster and corn in every single one. The worst thing to happen if you give somebody lobster fritter, they open up, there's no lobster in it. That would suck. Pissed off, right? Yeah. So oh, heck yeah. We're just gonna pop these right in here. Boom. Boom. So Kevin, while you're doing that, I'm just gonna get ready for our <clears throat> next Chardonnay. And I noticed that uh, you still have a little bit of the Belvine, which I'm out of the Belvine. Mm. So now we have actually a Deloach Chardonnay. And this Deloach Chardonnay is actually from Sonoma. Oh. Yes. Sonoma is actually west of, actually, hold on, Naples here, Sonoma stuff. And we have Alexander Valley, so it forms a triangle. So this actually from Deloach, um, something different about Deloach is that Deloach actually has a French winemaking technique in a heritage. So their wines are slightly different, and it, it, you're still going to get that oak in there, you're still going to get the fruit flavors, um, and your typical California Chardonnays are going to be oaky. And, believe it or not, I'm going to ask you a quick question. Mm -hmm. Where do you think Chardonnay came from? Where did it originate from? France. Of course. From a small village called Chardonnay. Bingo. Wow. There you go. See, I'm learning every week with you guys. Woo! <laughs> yeah. I'm learning. So, that's going to go perfect with this aioli that we're going to make. Yeah. Okay. But why Chardonnay? Because it cuts the acidity of the oil. Correct. The fatness. And we have also acidity in our aioli, which is a citrus aioli. You can do a chipotle any type. Mm. This is super simple. This in a, in a bowl right here, I have mayonnaise and stone ground mustard. Okay, equal parts. I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of lemon and a pinch of Old Bay. Okay, and we are just going to get a nice mix until it becomes an aioli. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can put this in a squeeze bottle, a little dollop on the top of each fritter. Um, for tonight, I'm just going to put some on the plate and then. You can also do it in a ramekin on the side for dipping. Our fritters are getting close. We want to just poke them. If you have a slotted spoon, that's perfect um, because you can take them out while the oil drips or tongs work well as well. Is there a way that you can just look at it visually to see if they're ready? I can feel it. And you've been doing chest. it for a long time. So you can obviously yes. feel it. I can for feel us, it. not. Um, the best way for a novice is to take the biggest one out, break it in half and look at it. If it's still uh, kind of wet on the inside, you want to continue to cook until it's cooked all the way through. 
Mm. Um, what do you need? Can I get you something? I got it. I got it. So, paper towel lined plate. We're going to use when we pull these out because we want um, the oils, the excess oils, to drip off into that. So, like I said, here, let's pick, take a big one out of here. We're going to throw it on the paper towel. I'm just going to refill my glass. Good quickly. job. And we're going to just break it open to see. And you can see that needs another 90 seconds or so. 90. It's cooked all the way on the outside. Just a little bit. Of you can see a little bit of batter. Right? That's the best way to tell. So we just pop it right back in there. And that continues to cook. So typically, how long would you be cooking those fritters from your scooper? 350 degrees, about seven minutes. Seven minutes. Yes. You know seven's a very good number for me? It is. Why? Because it craps. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Last week it was, oh, episode one is Arabian Horses. Oh, <laughs> this week is craps. Do you have a gambling problem? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> we, we take calculated risks, by the way. There's no gambling right. at all. Innovation. So, if you don't feel comfortable with cooking them all the way in the oil, you can pop them on a sizzle platter, finish them in the oven at 350 degrees for a couple minutes, they'll continue to cook through, and then you're good to go. We're just going to take our aioli, again, mayonnaise, stone ground mustard, a little bit of lemon juice, and some Old Bay. You know, you make this look very easy, by the way. It is easy. And when I actually believe in that, I am cooking my steak differently. If you remember from episode one, we did that steak in the pan. I'm so used to grilling steak on, on my lead lever. Yeah. I try the pan. Oh my gosh. Well, for a filet, it's super easy. It's very yeah, lean. It, it sears hard, and you can finish in the oven if you want. We've got some really positive feedback. Uh, viewers have been sending in their pictures. We'll, we'll start to post them as we yeah. move forward. But the steak, the pork, all the things that we've cooked over the last few episodes, uh, people have been sending in pictures of their finished products. And you know what will be good? When we actually do our finale, outside of the finale, we're going to be going on the road. So if anyone out there, um, you guys have any suggestions for, for Kevin for our plates and dishes, let us know. Just send us, shoot us an email. You can always text us. You can call us. 508-507-9463, which spells wine. <laughs> Just a guess, huh? <laughs> and uh, we, uh, so I think we're gonna do a Newport episode, maybe yes. a Boston episode, obviously. And then you guys throw questions in, or so if you have a great location, you want us to go pair some wines, there you go. make, a, make a, a dish, and have some fun. Uh, we'll go. We'll okay, do that. What do, we, what do we got here now? So our finished product, we're just gonna dust with a little bit of. Old Bay and a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're going to go right on our plate. Wow, that looks phenomenal. You can get fancy and do a nice little lemon wedge. Here's a tip always put a little color on your lemon, it makes you look professional. And then we have some. That does have a lot of contrast and color to it. Yeah. We've got some yellow, some, some greens. Some micro greens here. Our fresh aioli. If you had a squeeze ball, you want to do a dollop on the top of each one of those, you could. Um, but that is a lobster corn wow. firm, the citrus aioli, and a couple fun California Chardonnays. Absolutely. So, again, um, we're just going to wrap up very quickly. That does look good. And for any of the viewers out there, if, you've, uh, if you're following along, please send us your photos, your finished products. Um, we're always interested in seeing what it looks like because I'm looking at it going, you're a professional. You make this look so easy. So one of the suggestions that came up, is that you to do a, because we have a dual cooktop, right? We're going to actually bring in maybe a lucky viewer, maybe. Viewer, yeah. all right? Or even oh. someone, um, maybe one of our sponsors who is not a professional chef. Right. And they'll be cooking alongside you and following along. Perfect. Then we can show you how easy it actually is. Right. You know, so. That sounds fun. There you go. Maybe I'll be in our season two. Season two. Season two. So next week we're off. Enjoy the 4th of July, the holiday, stay safe. Season finale, July 9th. Yes. We're going to have special guests, some fun dishes, some really cool wines, right? Of Always. Course. Always. And if you guys want to order any type of wine, Innovations, right? Innovations.us. Innovation.us. Because we're a U.S. company. And Jason Lee will ship them directly to your house, sometimes overnight. Overnight. Yeah. Anywhere in the New England area is overnight. Always, Kev. Cheers, my friend. Vino is live, episode five. We'll see you in two weeks.